International Treasures Conversation. I'm Carlita Daniel, and joining me today for our conversation is Lorna Ned Daniel, better known to most of you as Fire Empress, Calypsonian and Soka artist. Thank you so much for joining us. You're most welcome, and good afternoon to everybody in listening land. Right, let's start with just getting a bit of background. Let's tell us who Fire Empress is. Where did you come from in St. Vincent? How did you get started in a sing on a singing career? Okay. For those of you, you know, my name is Lorna Ned. I grew up, well, I was born in Sandy Bay, grew up in Mesopotamia, Canaan, and Richland Park, so I'm a country chick. Okay, so you're from the countryside. So how do you get from the countryside to being an international soca and calypso artist? I always had a love for music on a hold. I started way back in school and church growing up. So it was very easy to make it something as a livelihood. So I started basically in school and then off to Trinidad where I resided for about 17 years. And that's where I took it internationally. So did you always sing Calypso and or soca music? I started doing gospel, went into um, the hotel in Tobago where I was doing a little bit of everything from the jazz, the reggae, and then I took Calypso on in 2011. Okay, thank you. Now, the main topic that we are looking at today is women in Calypso. Now, let's just for not everybody will know what Calypso music is. So let's just discuss briefly what we understand by Calypso and by Soca music. So tell us what you know so Calypso music to be. For me growing up, I was always told that Calypso is basically the poor man's newspaper. I don't know how else to, to explain it. It was a poor man's newspaper, meaning that in those times when Calypso really started, which was in the mid 19th century, and it originally started in Trinidad and then branched off to every other Caribbean island. Um, it's a mix of African music. It was since back, we can even go back to the slavery days when and um, um, the slaves used to use this sort of music to mock their, um, their people who were their leaders. So, I mean, it goes way back. But for me, I would say it's a poor man's newspaper back there when, when liter literacy was not out there like that. So people used to listen to Calypso to, to, to hear what was going on around them and around the country at that time. Okay. So also, I suppose that fits in very well with our tradition of an oral tradition where most of our interaction, most of how we pass stories on information was done orally, whether through songs or stories. And yeah. some of the research I did, aided by Michael Peters, talked about the fact that it was the folk songs of Africa that the slaves brought to the region, which were eventually to evolve first yeah. in Trinidad into the Calypso art form. And yes. they were also, as the Calypso developed, um, they were also a means of expressing social ills, the plight yes. of the masses, and, and making socio-political commentary on what was going on in the various islands. Yes. Okay. Let's look at soca music now. What's the difference then between soca and Calypso? <laughs> soca is the baby sister of Calypso. Soka, which, and I, I have a meaning here, it's the soul, the soul of Cam Calypso. That's where Soka comes from. It's a faster beat. Um, whereas Calypso, we used to deal with, and, and we still do, the issues, political and social issues. Soka now gives you a more rivalry and winery. So the beat is faster and it's reveling, reveling music. That's what I like to call it. Party music then. Yes. So it's a faster beat and then it deals more with fun, entertainment, party and nice time rather than the more Correct. serious Correct. of Calypso. Correct. Okay, good. So now you are both Calypso and Soka, right? Yes. Let's talk about Calypso then. In general, we've said it's socio-economic, socio-political commentary. 
But for you now, what kind of themes and topics have you dealt with in your Calypso songs? I have dealt with nation building, empowering women, and also the social issues of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Trinidad and Tobago, and the other Caribbean islands. Okay. Now, do you write all your own songs? Are they written for you, or do you co-write with others? I do a bit of both simply because I don't want my music to be in one era. So I always tend to get different writers and I will put myself into it. So even though it's written by somebody else, I'm always the last one to put my final detail in for it to become a song. Do you think there are any particular aspects of our Vincentian heritage or culture that have featured in your songs? Oh, yes, a lot. Um, one of my songs in particular is True Vinci. Um, True Vinci dealt with uh, people who live abroad and always want this sort of love. They, they love the country and they want to come back. And some of the things that they would miss, the historical sites, the beaches, the food, all of that in one song. And it's called True Vinci. You should look it up. Okay. Maybe we should get you to sing a few bars for us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lonette. So we have Calypso as an art form. You mentioned that you sing about issues concerning women and so on. Well, yes. let's talk about women in Calypso. Yes. What has been the experience of women in Calypso? Now, before we go on, I just want to um, just mention the fact that the Calypso competition, that evolved over time. Initially in St. Vincent, it was just part of, they would go up to the government house, sing for the administrator and get a prize of a, like a maypole decorated. But in the 1960s, early 60s, it became a competition as part of the Calypso. And it was the Calypso King at the time. Now, as that name suggests, women were not represented then. Correct. Right. Later in 1976, the first Queen of Calypso competition happened. Still, women were not in the Calypso monarch or king competition. Now, when we look around the Caribbean, let's go to TNT, Trinidad and Tobago. We know that's where it began. You also told us you've spent time there. Tell us about the women that you know who were involved in Calypso in Trinidad. Okay, uh, we can go way back because one of my favorite is Calypso Rose. And I think she was one who, one of the many who paved the path for younger female Calypsonians in the business. We had the likes of singing Sandra. We had the likes of uh, singing Francine. Ella Andel. You know, and these these are from Trinidad. No, we do have St. Vincent also, but these ones are from Trinidad who really set the path. And if you if you listen to the lyrical content of those songs way back, they would have been complaining about not getting a stage where women can can express themselves. One in particular, if you remember, uh, singing Sandra, they die with my dignity. And that song was a very strong song, and it still is significant today. Ladies, females in the business have a difficult road to trot, but once you stay focused, it's, it's there. Indeed, because I, again, some of the research I did, it said the first woman to compete in the tents in Trinidad was in 1935. And while the crowds really were very happy with her, the other Calypsonians weren't. They thought a woman shouldn't be there. A woman's place was at home. Correct. We've moved forward. I mean, there are a lot of areas that women weren't allowed to work in, train in, and so on. So we've moved forward. Let's yes. go back now to the St. Vincent Calypso Monarch competition. Would it surprise you to know that it wasn't until 2001 that a woman first won that competition? Of course, because because just like Trinidad, it was a male dominated um, ring. When when you talk about you, you, you see what they had Calypso King. It wasn't Calypso Queen or, 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 or Calypso Monarch. It was the Calypso King. And um, as we say, it evolved. You know, they, they had to put a stamp on it. So we, we do have females in St. Vincent who would have also set the path for other females in St. Vincent to, to really 
you know, go forward with it. Indeed, because the first woman to actually get into the finals was in 1981. Mm -hmm. And she was called Singing Pearl. She placed yes. second in the yes. competition. But yet we have to fast forward 20 years to 2001 yes. before yes. Joy C, Joy Crease won the title. And that was the year they had to change it from Calypso King to Calypso Monarch. Definitely. Right. So you talked about women in St. Vincent. Can you name some of the women you know who've been involved in Calypso? Whether or not oh, there have been there have been a lot over the years, but we can start off with the likes of uh, Fatty Jan, Princess Monique, Lil Bits, Pat Ralph, Joycey, and even Andreen Batiste, Rankin Basha. I mean, now we have the younger ones who sprung off from in school straight up into the adults, which would have been Chanel McKenzie, um, and quite a few other young ones, Sheena Collis. Uh, a, lot, a lot of them are around now, but it took a while for that stepping stone to really start. And I think that... Um, the females are a bit too shy in St. Vincent. Sometimes they're a little bit too shy. They just want to come out the shell sometimes, you know, but there are quite a few. And I do, do love Princess Monique. She's no longer in the business, but she was one that I actually looked at and, and decided, you know what, this could work. Joycey is a good one also. Okay. Well, now, as you know, Calypso Rose was the first woman to win the Trinidad Calypso mm -hmm. Monarch title and again they had to change it from calypso king to calypso, to calypso monarch. monarch right mm -hmm. and then subsequently there have been four or five women and some of them have won it two or three times in trinidad we've got singing sound mm -hmm. Denise Plummer, and latterly terry lyons yeah in saint vincent tell me those who have won the calypso monarch title now women who've won the title in saint vincent in St. Vincent? Yes. Uh, hmm. Well, we've got Joycey. Yes. We have Princess Monique. We have Princess Monique. We have myself. Fire Empress. We have Chanel McKenzie in 2020. Even though she's been winning the crowns while in school, I'm, I'm thinking I can't remember her winning the adults until about 2020. Yes, indeed. or 2019, somewhere around there, you know. But if I'm wrong, I stand corrected. But yeah, there, there are a few. Right. Joycey also. Well, Joycey started. Princess yes. Monique followed. She won yes. it two times, and you won it twice, I believe. Twice, yes. So tell me about that. Were you which tent were you associated with at the time? Um. I was actually with Upstage Tent in St. Vincent. Uh, I came off from, from Trinidad with a hype because of the crown that I won there in 2011, which was the Trinidad and Tobago, Calypso, Queens, Monarch. And from there, I came across to St. Vincent and I won it in 2012 with a song called I Am Woman, Woman Empowerment Again. And also true Vinci. The, the, those times they had two calypsos. Now it's even easier. You can do one one calypso now, but back then it was two. Okay. So and then you won it a second time? In 2017. Okay, and the songs you sang then? Guilty as charged. Another one again, woman empowerment. You know what I mean? A woman working hard at home and and instead of getting the the the, the push from, from the husband. Instead, he was a cheater and stuff like that. So that's what that song was about. So some hard-hitting lyrics there. But we hope so that the kind of lyrics that you described also teach and get you know people to reflect on themselves, both men and women, because it's not just about women. It's most not just about most women. definitely. Most definitely. And women, when, when we sing Calypso, I like the crowd and the audience to be a part of it. I want it to be a topic that is in existence. You know, the problem is there. Not a lot of people know how to deal with it. Yes, we know. Okay, let's say abuse. We know that abuse is a wrong, women abuse. But then it's how you put it in the Calypso and how people could relate to it. It's, it's all a, a, an art for me. 
Do you think, though, that compared to men, the women in Calypso, particularly those who've had success, do you think they're regarded equally or the same as men in the Calypso arena? Time has changed. Long ago, the men used to think that it was an easy road, but now it's competition. The women actually come out strong. The topics, if you could sing about politics, there's another female who will say, well, I could sing about politics too. So it's always, it's always a fight now. The table, the table is level. Although sometimes it doesn't seem like that, it is level. It's about you to bring your A game and your, your Calypso. Like we say, Calypso is about commentary. So you need to have a storyline. It's, it's, it's just how it works. Okay. So you know, you, you can't sit down now and say, oh, 2023 will be won by a man or it will be won by a woman because the competition is so stiff now. Okay. Now... We've had several women monarchs since 2001. Do you think this has actually paved the way, made it easier for the younger women who want to get into Calypso? Most definitely, most definitely. Um, we have been, and I, I put my, myself as a part of it because I remembered when I won the crown in 2012, it was actually a triple crown that year. I won three crowns in one year, which was the Calypso, the Raga, and the Road March, which was never done before by a woman in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I'm the first, and I'm yet to see another one. But I remember when I had this young girl, and she's also in the Calypso arena, she said, oh, I want to be like Fire Empress. So there are little ones and young ones who are always looking at us as, you know, oh, I want to be like this and I want to do this and I want to do this like Fire Empress. So, yeah, we are setting the path. Okay. So now you've, you've been in competition for quite a while. You've had the experience of Trinidad and St. Vincent and you've had the experience of winning titles in both um, Yes. Countries. What sort of advice do you think you could give to young women who either have already started or want to start in order to go forward and succeed? Have a love for what you want to do. If you want to do soca or Calypso, you must love it. You must have a passion for it. Respect it and always respect yourself and the road is always there. It's not, nobody's promising you a smooth road. There are going to be ups and downs, but stay focused. Stay focused, keep your eyes on the prize, and you can win it. And just one last thing. What really do you think the future is for women in Calypso, in St. Vincent in particular, as we're talking about that? It's a very bright future. Very, very bright. Uh, we do have a lot more females now in the art form as opposed to long ago when we had one or two. Now we have three and four. We even have a whole Calypso Queens competition separated from the Calypso Monarch. And that has like 11 to 12, 13 queens. So I do know that we do have female Calypsonians in the business in St. Vincent. So the road is setting. You know, we just have to stay focused. I mean, look the part, dress the part, do what you have to do, and everything else come into play. Okay. So thank you so much, Fire Empress, for talking to us. And I hope that the female, young, aspiring Calypsonians out there will take heart from what you have said. Thank you so much for joining us in this conversation. Thank you. Bye-bye. Pass me a drink of your rum. Pass me a drink of your rum. Hey. Pass me a drink of your rum. I drink of your rum. I drink of your rum. Tell them what you want. When you pick your passing, and you want some good in. Tell them what you want.